Hello and welcome, I'm Alex Gerdyuk and you're watching Hat to Hat on UATV. First day of spring saw Ukraine covered in frost and snowstorms. Nighttime temperatures in some parts of the country dropped to minus 20 degrees Celsius and the need for heating significantly increased. Gazprom, Russian company responsible for supplying gas to Ukraine, suddenly decided to stop its supply. That caused a so-called civil mobilization in Ukraine. Schools, kindergartens and universities were temporarily closed and Ukrainian citizens managed to reduce gas consumption by 14 percent in just a few days. Though frost and snow are still here, the gas situation in Ukraine has stabilized for now. To discuss the issue with gas, we're joined in the studio by Gennady Kobol, director of Expo Consulting, a company specializing in the Ukrainian oil and gas sector. Hello and thank you for joining, for joining us today. Hello. Uh, so, Mr. Kobol, um, what was that gas that Ukraine was uh, supposed to buy from Gazprom starting on March 1st of this year? Because as far as we know, Ukraine was always keeping the rhetoric that uh, we do not buy any gas from Russia any longer. Uh, February 28, uh, we uh, uh, said that the uh, um, Stockholm Arbit uh, Arbitrary Court uh, Decided? Issue, decided or issued uh, the decision that um, um, Gazprom should uh, pay uh, two and a half billion uh, dollars uh, to Naftogaz. It, it was a decision uh, for whole. Uh, uh, first decision was made by uh, at uh, at the end of the uh, last year, and uh, now uh, the, it was a second decision. And the uh, first decision uh, was uh, Naftogaz should pay $2 billion. Second decision was uh, Gazprom should pay uh, $4.6 billion. So that's why uh, the, uh, if we put together uh, all these decisions, uh, Naftogaz uh, will receive uh, $2.5 billion from Gazprom. As a compensation? as a compensation for trans uh, gas transit uh, to Europe. Mm -hmm. For which period? For this period since March 1st or since before? No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's uh, about uh, 2014 uh, to, uh, to this day. Mm -hmm. But uh, why did, as far as I understand, the Stockholm Arbitrary Court deciding on continuing uh, Moscow to supply uh, Ukraine with gas since March 1st? It's not, why was that? Uh, yes, it's not continue, it's start because uh, well, two start years. Over. Uh, yes, yes because start over. And start over uh, to uh, supply uh, because uh, um, uh, the first decision uh, said that. Uh, Ukraine should uh, buy from uh, Gazprom 5 billion cubic meter this year and next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, gas so supply from the uh, from the uh, first of uh, March uh, it's uh, this decision. So uh, every uh, month uh, uh, Naftogaz uh, will receive uh, Everybody uh, hopes that uh, Naftogaz will receive uh, like a half a billion cubic meters. Mm -hmm. So uh, then it means that we were obliged to buy this gas from Russia, basically. Yes. Okay. Yes. But what was the Ukrainian uh, gas case in this uh, Stockholm Arbitrary Court all about? Uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, this decision, second decision, was about gas transit. Mm -hmm. It's uh, only about uh, uh, gas transit. So Moscow didn't transit the gas through Ukraine, or mm. what was the purpose of this? This is uh, 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 first the price of transit, the cost, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, a volume. This is about the volume of uh, transit because during uh, last five years, uh, Gazprom uh, significantly decrease the volume of transit, uh, mm -hmm. transit gas uh, to Europe. And the pressure in the pipes, as far as I understand, and it was kind of making some troubles in Ukraine to transport and tra transmit the gas. It's a problem because uh, pressure is not stable. Mm -hmm. If we don't have a stable pressure in the uh, pipelines, we need to uh, spend much more uh, gas 
to support this uh, uh, pressure. So it cost for Ukraine much more uh, than uh, if uh, the, the pressure um, if be stable. Mm -hmm. And moreover, you mentioned that the price, price was higher. Uh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Naftogaz wants uh, uh, Gazprom pay, pay a higher price for transit. It's uh, normal uh, and uh, this price should be uh, like uh, uh, gas transit uh, cost in uh, other uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. But was this price uh, adequate enough? Now not. No, no. no. Yes, sure. Because it uh, was uh, signed this uh, ten years ago, uh, nine years ago. So uh, the situation is changed already. Mm -hmm. But uh, what was happening on this 1st of March? As far as I understand, Moscow needed to supply Ukraine with gas and uh, just abruptly uh, Gazprom refused of doing so. And uh, then the drama continued around this gas and now the, the latest official information that Ukrainian nafta gas requires compensation from Gazprom for overpayment of 34 percent as a result of Ukraine's emergency gas purchase from Europe because Ukraine found gas in Poland. So um, this was published by Yuri Vitrenko, commercial director of nafta gas. How do you think? Will the Gazprom pay this compensation to Ukraine? It will depend not only from Gazprom, it will depend uh, from uh, court decision. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the moment, Naftogaz uh, even uh, don't uh, ask uh, <laughs> court. Uh, he, he, we don't know which one court. It ma ma can be a court in London, merchant, and uh, or in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. Could you be more specific about it? Why London or New York? Because uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, Stockholm Arbitration Court, uh, decision is already made. And all companies, Nafta Gas and Gazprom, should uh, do everything what this court uh, uh, decided. Yeah. So uh, if one uh, company like Gazprom uh, doesn't uh, uh, want to do uh, these things which uh, court decided. So uh, uh, the, the next step is to ask another court to arrest uh, assets. Uh, in, worldwide? In, yeah, worldwide it's depend. Uh, it, it, it must be may, maybe uh, Ukraine or Europe. For the price, for the equal price of the fine, right? Not only uh, uh, about uh, this uh, price, about uh, two and a half billion, because uh, the situation is changing uh, during uh, every month. So each day uh, Gazprom uh, doesn't pay, uh, the price is higher. Mm -hmm. So there is some interest and percentage on this kind of find, and it always it is always growing. Every next uh, one. Uh, decision, court decision, will uh, rise the price. Mm -hmm. But for this Gazprom decision to stop the gas supply uh, abruptly, uh, are there more economic reasons or political reasons of doing so? Everybody says that it's uh, it's political decision. Could you be more specific about this? Because uh, if company is uh, doing like uh, economic uh, you don't need to uh, find uh, some uh, any other extra paying like Gazprom will pay in in the future. So uh, the main uh, idea is uh, for Gazprom is to uh, make nafta gas weaken and uh, not not uh, to uh, to get much more money because at the moment Gazprom uh, can. Uh, mm, sell as many gas as uh, they can mm -hmm. in Europe, because uh, in Europe we, we see it is a shortage of gas supply. Of course. But, uh, uh, at but the this, moment, this uh, is not only about money, this is also about trust and about uh, partnership. If Yeah, but uh, Gazprom don't mind about uh, trust, don't mind about money. 
-hmm. have money, they have this rich company, big company, and uh, the main idea, the main uh, aim for Gazprom is to destroy uh, Naftogaz. gas, that's all. But how will this accident influence the uh, development of Nord Stream 2 project? Uh, I think uh, this situation is uh, um, will uh, brings uh, some uh, good uh, news for uh, Naftogaz because uh, Naftogaz in this situation can show for Europe for uh, buyers in uh, Europe uh, to show how Gazprom uh, uh, did. And uh, the uh, situation is uh, in in this uh, in this time is uh, uh, looks like uh, Gazprom is not uh, a good uh, supplier uh, for whole Europe. So that's why uh, the um, buildings uh, of uh, the process of uh, buildings. Uh, of Nord Stream 2 is under uh, discussion and uh, it's not very good for, for Nord Stream 2. That was not a good argument yes. for Nord Stream 2. Yeah, yeah so, correct. But um, we mentioned that Ukraine found some gas in Poland, uh, in Polish company. What are our gas supplying uh, alternatives in the world except of Poland, for example? When we are talking about uh, gas supply from Europe, we can see that uh, more than uh, 60 companies during last years uh, supply gas to Ukraine. So it's not political decision, it's business. And uh, of course, uh, in the last year, in 2017, uh, as uh, much as uh, 60 companies uh, supply uh, uh, twice more than uh, the year before. This uh, said that uh, the interest, interest for Ukrainian gas market is rise in Europe. It's growing, right? But uh, what are the top countries that would supply gas to Ukraine? Uh, we have uh, three routes. It's from Poland, from Slovakia, from uh, Hungary. From Slovakia, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. But when we are talking about companies, uh, the from 10, of 10 countries probably, from Czech Republic, from Germany, from France, from uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. What about our own gas sources? What kind of sources do we have in, uh, in Ukraine? We have a lot of uh, reserves, but uh, the production is not too big. When we are talking about our own inner production, it's like uh, 20 billion cubic uh, per year. Mm -hmm. And how much do we need for the whole population uh, per year? 33. 33, uh, Like okay. 33 in last year. So uh, we need uh, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And we compensated with the imported gas supply? From Europe, okay. during the last two years. But speaking of Ukraine as a country for gas transit to Europe, is it still a reliable transit partner? Yes, uh, because uh, we have a good uh, transit system. It's uh, old, uh, need to be improved, but in general it's not bad. And Ukraine uh, can support for, for, for many years in the future uh, to supply gas to Europe. And what did we prove with this gas conflict to, to Europe? We show that we have a good specialist, that we can uh, resolve a big problem uh, very quickly, yes, very an effectively. Yes, emergency problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Ukraine uh, looks like a very uh, good uh, as uh, as a political, uh, also as a technically. I mean, Ukraine's uh, gas. Okay, on this positive note, I want to thank you for this interview because unfortunately we run out of time, but that was very exciting, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was Gennady Kobol, Director of Expo Consulting. Thank you for watching UATV.